Hi, and welcome back to U.S. History with me, Mr. Snyder. And today we are finishing up the Civil Rights Movement, talking about the successes of the latter third of the Civil Rights Movement and challenges that are left to be accomplished. Learning targets today are to talk about the significance of uh, civil rights events, such as Freedom Summer, the March on Selma, and the race riots. Uh, then we'll talk about some other African-American civil rights leaders uh, besides Martin Luther King, some who may have had some different methods. And then we'll talk about the gains of the movement and the work left to be done. So Freedom Summer is started by CORE, the Congress of Racial Equality, we've discussed them before, and SNCC, or the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, and they their goal in the South is to register black voters in southern states and to bring attention to the issue of voter discrimination in the South and blacks simply aren't being allowed to vote, aren't being allowed to register, being intimidated if they vote and they want Congress to pass a law prohibiting it because voter registration is the responsibility of the states but if they're not, it's not being done fairly they want Congress to uh, pass a law prohibiting that and making it fair. Well, this turns very violent. Three civil rights workers are uh, kidnapped and found murdered at a construction site. Uh, people won't cooperate in the investigation. They just won't talk to police. No one will rat anybody out because they all agree with it. Other activists are beaten and fired from their jobs and some are kicked out of their homes for participating in this. So this does bring a lot of violence to um, the area around Mississippi. And so out of Freedom Summer in 1964 comes the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, and they want to be recognized as the state's official only Democratic Party because the other one is not fair. They're racist. They're discriminatory. So they travel to the 1964 Democratic National Convention since it's an election year, and uh, Fannie Lou Hamer gives a powerful testimony about what happens to the SNCC members and what is going on in the South. And people hear this. And adding to this, later on in Selma, Alabama, a black man is shot and killed for trying to vote. So Martin Luther King, the SCLC, and SNCC plan a 50-mile march to the state's capital, uh, Montgomery. And on March 7, 1965, uh, 600 marchers set out and they're met on a bridge by police and told to turn back and they don't and they keep marching and it's nonviolent resistance and they are whipped, clubbed and tear gassed by police all while the cameras are rolling and this is known as Bloody Sunday. And three weeks later, 3,000 marchers then set out with federal protection. And along the way, the march grew to 25,000 people just marching to Montgomery, Alabama to demand equal rights. And this is known as uh, Bloody Sunday and then the March to Montgomery. Out of this, in these two events, uh, Congress takes notice and passes the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And what this is, is it eliminates the voter literacy tests that were a part of the uh, Jim Crow laws way, way back after the Civil War. It also enables uh, federal examiners to register voters. So it allows federal examiners to make sure that uh, voting registration is done fairly. And if not, they can actually do it themselves. Also during this time, the 24th Amendment is passed, which abolishes the poll tax, because that is considered unconstitutional. You should not have to pay to vote your opinion. And so that's what the Voting Rights Act of 1965 accomplished. Let's talk about some militant people and militant organizations, such as the Nation of Islam and the Black Panthers, uh, led by Malcolm X and Stokely Carmichael. And so race riots happen uh, because of this unfair treatment from 1964 to 1968. 100 race riots in different cities such as uh, Los Angeles in the majority black Watt, uh, Watts district, Detroit, New York City, Chicago, and the government decides to investigate. And so the Kerner Commission is tasked with 
determining the cause of these riots. And they say that this is from long-term racial discrimination, uh, is the single most important cause of this violence. Now let's turn our attention to Malcolm X, maybe the other leader of the civil rights movement a lot of people consider. Um, his name is Malcolm Little, but when he joins the group known as the Nation of Islam, he changes his last name to X because Little is his slave name, according to him. He doesn't know his real last name coming over from Africa. Um, he preaches black superiority over whites, not even equality, black superiority. And he thinks that blacks should be separate from whites because they're better. Um, he's a follower of Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam. He breaks away from that organization and uh, actually goes on the trip or the pilgrimage to the nation or the Islamic country or the Islamic land and decides that blacks and whites can coexist peacefully because of what he saw there. And so he comes back and starts preaching this, and the Nation of Islam does not appreciate it, and he is assassinated in 1965 while giving a speech um, in New York City. The Nation of Islam is also known as the Black Muslims, and they are led by Elijah Muhammad, and they follow the Islamic religion, but they twist it, and they twist it into freedom, justice, and equality for blacks, not all people. They also preach separatism from whites. And this guy is their leader. Malcolm X was like their rock star. He's the guy who brought the people in, in and got the people into the seats and really spread the word because he was a very powerful speaker. Uh, Stokely Carmichael is the, he's a former leader of SNCC and then he moves to lead uh, part of the Black Panthers and he adheres, he, he didn't think this nonviolent resistance was working, and that's what a lot of these uh, people believe. So he adheres to what is called black power, which is instead of being ashamed of where you come from and discriminated against, take pride in your African heritage and political and social leadership. And so this is also part of the Back to Afri Africa movement, where people decide to embrace their heritage and wear African clothes and they this black power movement uses their economic muscle and political muscle uh, to gain independence from white influence and have their own heritage and their own culture here in America that stems from African culture. The Black Panthers are a p uh, political and militant group in Oakland, California, founded by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale, and they wear black leather and berets and openly display loaded shotguns, and their original goal is to fight police brutality in the ghettos, and uh, people who can't defend themselves, they defend them for them to the police. And so they also preach self-defense and sell Mao Zedong writings, they are still around today, and are still preaching black superiority, and that is the Black Panthers. 1968 turns into a dark year for America because April 4th, 1968, is when Martin Luther King Jr. is assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee uh, by a sniper rifle. And a hundred riots erupt in large cities, and uh, Robert Kennedy, brother of John Kennedy, who was running for president at the time, is in Indianapolis, and he prevents riots in Indianapolis by uh, making a speech there about the legacy of Martin Luther King and what he would want. And then June 6th, Robert Kennedy is assassinated. He's upset over Kennedy's Middle East policies. Again, Kennedy was running for president. And the Civil Rights Act of 1968 is also passed this is not a part of the dark year for America, but it ends discrimination in housing and strengthens anti-lynching laws in the South. And so what is this civil rights movement? What can we take away from it? Well, it, it does end de jure segregation in housing and public places and schools. African Americans have a greater pride in being black, so the blacks adopt this African influence uh, and culture, and they make political gains as well. More black officials, officials are elected because more blacks can vote in the South. 
uh, during the splintering of the uh, civil rights movement in the latter half of the 60s, public support declines for equality because the whites are frightened by these urban riots and Black Panther groups. Uh, white flight leaves the cities a slums for uh, blacks to live in. We've learned that from the 1950s uh, unit. And there's new problems. There's still discrimination in housing and jobs, but it's hard, it's difficult to prove discrimination. Uh, there's still educational inequality, and blacks are left to deal with poverty and racism. And so it's all about changing people's behaviors and changing people's ideas about racial equality. And so that's all I have for you today. Make sure you fill out those learning targets, and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.